Hello everyone and welcome back. I have another tutorial for you today and this is gonna be a Buzz Lightyear inspired dress using the Simplicity Pattern 8237. I've been wanting to try and do this pattern for a while and I finally got inspired to what kind of theme slash character that I wanted to make and Buzz Lightyear seemed perfect for this whole entire outfit. I will be doing view B although both dresses are extremely similar with just a few tiny differences. And I will be making mine in a size 16 and I'm just gonna be using all woven cotton. We are practically gonna be using half of the pieces provided, so this might get a little confusing. But I tried my best to label each piece throughout the video. I wouldn't necessarily recommend this pattern for a beginner because this does have a lot of steps and there's a lot going on with the entire thing. So for a beginner, I would do something first that involves gathering, adding a zipper, and adding a lining to a blouse before they jump into this one so they have a better idea of what's going on. This is going to be a long tutorial, but once again, I try and touch as much of the steps as I can just because I'm always looking for step-by-step -step tutorials myself. But feel free to pause the video at any point that you need. So let's get started. Once all your pieces are cut out, go ahead and mark all your dots and notches on all of your pattern pieces. Getting started, we're gonna grab our number one pattern piece and our number four pattern piece, which is the front and back of the bodice. And we're gonna do a 5 8 inch seam allowance base stitch along the necklines of all your pieces. They call this a stay stitch, so your neckline doesn't get wonky when you work with it. Going back to our front bodice pattern pieces, you're gonna lay them nice sides together and you're gonna sew up that center seam with a 5 8 inch seam allowance. Go ahead and iron this seam open and then we're gonna move on to our waist tie pieces. We're gonna fold these in half lengthwise with night sides together again for both tie pieces. And we're going to sew up the small edge and along the long open edge with a 5 8 inch seam allowance. Snip off the corners on both of your ties. This will help make a sharper point when you turn them out. We're gonna flip both of these inside out and you can use a chopstick or pencil to poke out that corner. Then just iron these down so they're nice and neat. On the open edge, we're gonna do two gathering base stitches. Start with a three to four inch tail of thread, and we're first gonna do a 1 16th inch seam allowance base stitch, leaving the same size tail of thread at the end, and then do the same thing at a 3 8 inch seam allowance. Grabbing the top two threads on either side, you're gonna gently pull and it will gather the end of your tie. Grabbing your front bodice side pieces, Line up the end of the tie between the small dots that are indicated and line it up against the edge of your pattern piece and pin this down. Just make sure both your ties are the same direction with the longest points on top. Sew both of these down with a 3 8 inch seam allowance. Going back to our front bodice piece, we're going to take our front side bodice pieces and lay them both nice sides together along that curved edge and we're gonna pin these together. Take your time around that big curve, line up the bottom first, and then go to the top, and line up the top corner, and then you can kind of maneuver the fabric a little bit to follow that arc that it's in. So this is a little awkward, so just take your time, and make sure the edges of your fabric line up around that curve. We're gonna sew these together with the 5 8 inch seam allowance. So same thing as you're sewing, just go slow and take your time when going around the curve, adjusting your fabric as you go. Once that's sewn, we're gonna make little tiny clips into the seam allowance. Make sure you're not cutting past the thread and you're just making the clips where there's a curve. Do it to the other side as well. 
and this is just going to help that curve lay nicely. Iron the seam allowance toward the center. Moving your tie pieces out of the way, grab your side back bodice pieces and lay them right sides together, lining up the straight edges. Sew these together with the 5 8 inch seam allowance. And then iron these open as well. And then our last piece we're adding to our bodice is our bodice back pieces. And same thing with right sides together, you're going to pin up those curves just like we did the last time on both sides. Sew these together with the 5 8 inch seam allowance. Add your clips along the curve just like last time as well. And iron these seams toward the center back. And we'll put our bodice aside for now. I made a template for all of the Buzz Lightyear pieces on the front. And you can find that down below where you can download and print it out for yourself or you can always make your own. The black line will be your cutting line and the red line is your seam allowance line. If you're using felt, just cut out the seam allowance line. So you'll need red for the red button and one of the oval buttons, green for an oval button, blue for an oval button, yellow for the name tag, light blue for the Space Ranger logo, and you'll need white for the small oval of the logo and the wings for the logo. You can use cotton or felt to make it a little easier for the small Buzz Lightyear pieces, but I already had all the colors I needed in cotton. We're going to sew around the edges of these with the 1 4 inch seam allowance, leaving about a 2 inch gap on any side so that we can flip them out later. Once they are all sewn, go ahead and clip along curves and clip off the corners of any sharp edges. And then go ahead and start flipping these out, making sure to fold under your open edges 1 4 inches so that they're nice and neat all the way around. Go ahead and use a chopstick or a pencil to help you poke out those little corners and edges. This is going to take some time, so this is when you want to pop on a movie or listen to some music because it does take a bit of patience to work with these small pieces. And then you're going to want to iron them down so they're pressed nice and neat. Returning to the front of our bodice, I'm going to grab my collar piece and I'm just going to line up where it's supposed to go and I'm going to fold up that bottom edge 5 8 inches and I'm going to mark where that ends so I know where to start placing all of my pieces. That way they won't be covered underneath the collar. Then just start lining out your pieces and pin them all down. Once you're happy with how it looks, we're going to sew each one down with a 1 16 inch seam allowance all the way around the edges. Fold in the outside edges of your bodice so that they're right sides together. 
and pin up the top shoulder on both sides. Sew this with the 5 8 inch seam allowance and iron them open. Moving on to our collar piece, open them up so your wrong sides are face up and you're going to lay both interfacing pieces down on top and we're going to iron these together. Flip them over and then take your second collar pieces and lay them nice sides together. Pin down the edges and along the bottom curve. And we're going to sew these edges together with a 5 8 inch seam allowance. Snip off the corner and then we're going to make our clips along all of the curves on both pieces. And then flip it out using a pencil or chopstick to poke out the corner. Once they're neatly turned out, go ahead and iron them down so they're nice and neat. Then we're going to go back and sew a 5 8 inch base stitch across that top open section. Going back to our front bodice piece with the nice side face up, line up that center curve of your collar matching the large dot with the center seam first and pin those down. Then you're going to work your way up the sides of the collar matching it to the edge of the neckline, pinning those together as well. Sew this on with a 3 8 inch seam allowance. I'm going to do a lining with mine, so you're going to sew your lining pieces together the exact same way we did the bodice, pressing open your seams and clipping your seams as well. Grab your inner facing piece for the front facing and line it up with the front neckline and we'll iron this down. And then we're going to take our inner facing for the back facing and line it up with the back neckline and iron these down as well too. We're going to sew both of these bodices together with right sides together matching all the seams on your neckline. Sew these together with the 5 8 inch seam allowance. Go ahead and add more clips along the curve of the entire neckline. And we're going to open this up and we're going to press the seam allowance toward the lining. You can definitely make more clips if you need to, to help the fabric lay nicer. Then go back and pin your seam allowance down to your lining. Do a 1 16th inch top stitch sewing the seam allowance to your lining. So at this point, your bodice should look like it's starting to come together. We're going to grab our sleeve pieces and we're going to add gathering base stitches from the notches on one side all the way around to the other set of notches. 
start with your three or four inch tail of thread doing the first base stitch at a 1 16th seam allowance going from notch to notch leaving a tail of thread at the end as well and then the same thing again at a 3 inch seam allowance grabbing the top two threads you're going to pull gently to start gathering the edge of your sleeves Taking the two short ends, you're going to fold them together, making sure you have right sides together. Now we're going to sew this with a 5 8 inch seam allowance. Add a few clips around the curves and you can put those aside. Taking our sleeve cuff pieces, you're going to lay them with wrong sides up and we're going to iron on the interfacing to both pieces. Flip them over and you're going to take your other two pieces and lay them right sides together. Pin down the short ends and the long straight edge and sew these with the 5 8 inch seam allowance. Clip off your corners and then just like your collar, you're going to flip them inside out and iron it down. Then we're going to do a base stitch of 5 8 inch seam allowance across the open edge. Going back to our sleeves, make sure they're turned right side out. And lining up the dots on your sleeve with your sleeve cuff, you're going to start with the pointed side facing toward the back of the sleeve. You can find out the back of the sleeve by looking at which side has two notches where we did our base stitch. Line up that bottom edge and pin it all the way around. And then you're going to make sure the short straight edge is tucked underneath the pointed edge. Make sure to do the opposite direction with your sleeve cuff on the opposite sleeve. Sew these together with a 5 8 inch seam allowance. Fold down the cuff from your sleeve. And we're going to do a top stitch at a 1 16th inch seam allowance, sewing the seam allowance to the sleeve. Then you can flip your sleeve cuffs up, making sure the seam allowance is tucked inside. Going back to our bodice, line up the armholes of the bodice and lining matching the seam allowances and notches. And sew these together with a 3 8 inch seam allowance. Turn the bodice inside out. And with your sleeves right side out, Tuck your sleeve into the coordinating armhole, matching your notches. Pin these together at the seams and the dots and notches. And then adjust the gathers to fit the armhole perfectly and then you can go back and adjust the gathers so they're neatly distributed. Mm -hmm. 
sew these together with a 5 8 inch seam allowance. Grab your peplum front pieces and your peplum back pieces. And with right sides together, pin the short edges together. Sew them with the 5 8 inch seam allowance. Then iron them open. Go ahead and serge or zigzag stitch the bottom edge on both pieces. Grab your peplum front and back pieces, opening them up with the wrong sides face up. And we are going to add interfacing to all four pieces. With right sides together, you're going to line up the front peplum piece with the front peplum facing piece and then the shorter edge with your back peplum facing piece. And you can pin these edges together. Sew them with a 5 8 inch seam allowance. Then go back and serge or zigzag stitch the inner edge. We're going to sew the bottom edges together with a 5 8 inch seam allowance. Lifting up the facing piece, you're going to make a snip 1 4 inch into your peplum piece. And then you're going to cut off and leave a 1 4 inch seam allowance of the facing and the rest of your peplum after the 1 4 inch snip you made. So only your peplum piece should overlap by 1 4 inches. And you'll be doing the same thing to both sides and then leaving a 1 4 inch seam allowance on the edges as well. Lay the seam allowance toward the facing and we're going to sew this down with another top stitch at a 1 16th inch seam allowance. Just go down as far to the corner as you can and do this to all four sides. Then you can turn out your facing and poke out your corners and iron these down. Fold the bottom edge up about a half an inch to line up with the bottom of your facing and iron this down. So if done correctly, you can see that 1 4 inch of fabric is hidden perfectly under the facing. Sew the bottom with a 3 8 inch seam allowance. Open up your bodice face up, making sure that the lining is out of the way. Line up your peplum pieces right sides together making sure that the longest side is in the middle center. Then you can line up the rest of the dots or notches. Do the same thing to the other side, making sure that the centers perfectly line up with your center seam. Sew this with a 3 8 inch seam allowance. Taking your skirt front and skirt back pieces, take your skirt front piece laying right side up and then line up the edge with your skirt back piece with right sides together. Pin both sides and then taking the center back opening, line up those edges as well, adding one pin at the bottom. Sew this with a 5 8 inch seam allowance. And on the center back opening where you put your pin, you're going to sew a 5 8 inch seam allowance only up to about 1 4 inch under the notch. Iron open your seams. 
And with the center back seam that we made, you're going to add another clip 1 4 inch under the notch. Add your gathering base stitches along the whole top edge. Now going toward the back opening, we're going to add the pleats. So starting with the bottom one first, meet the two bottom marks that you've made with right sides together and then fold that flap down toward the bottom edge at the notches. Then you can pin this down. Go up to your next two marks that you've made and do the same thing. And then once again on the top two marks that you've made. Then you'll go ahead and make the opposite pleats on the other side. Sew these down with the 5 8 inch seam allowance. Grab your ruffle pieces next and pin two together at one end so you have four bunches. Then open these up. And then match the ends of two of these strips with right sides together and pin these together too. And continue this with the other two strips as well. So you should have one long strip all together. Sew all of your ends with the 5 8 inch seam allowance and then you're going to iron these open. Do a serge or zigzag stitch along both ends all the way across. And then with your open end pin the right sides together. Sew this with the 5 8 inch seam allowance and iron it open. Line up your pattern piece with one of your seams and mark where the gathering line is. You're going to sew your gathering base stitches 1 16th above the mark and 1 16th below the mark. All the way around to the other mark you've made. Grab your top two threads and we're going to gather this ruffle up. This does take a while as well. So take your time, try not to go too fast or pull too hard because if you break the threads, you're going to have to take out the old one, re-sew on a new gathering stitch and start all over. So just take your time. Going back to our skirt piece, you're going to serge or zigzag stitch the outer edge and then do a 5 8 inch base stitch from the bottom edge as well. Then we're going to take our ruffle and we're going to line up the seams on our ruffle with the dots marked on our skirt. And you want to have both the right sides from your ruffle and your skirt face up. So pin down your ruffle at all the points first and then go back and you're going to gather up the ruffle to fit the skirt and then adjust your ruffles in each section so that the gathers are perfectly distributed. And once again, this is going to be a long process so just take your time and throw on some more entertainment. We're going to sew the ruffle on, sewing between the middle of the gathering lines with the base stitch that you've made. Grab your ribbon
and you're gonna sew on the ribbon at the top and bottom edge over our gathering stitches. On the ends of both sides, you're gonna tuck it under so that it's finished nice and neat. Grab your front and back underskirt yoke pieces and we're gonna put this together like we did with our skirt. Opening up the front piece and then laying right sides together, matching up your edges and pinning them together. And then with the back center seam, you're gonna make a pin at the bottom and you're only gonna sew up to 1 4 inch below that notch. Sew these together with a 5 8 inch seam allowance. Make a new snip 1 4 under the old notch on your back seam and then iron open all of your seams. Grab your underskirt front and back pieces, laying them right sides together and pinning your edges. You're gonna do this to each end to make one large circle or tube. Sew these edges together with a 5 8 inch seam allowance. Iron open your seams. And then working with the bottom edge, we're going to fold it over 3 8 inches and iron it down all the way around. Sew this with a 1 16th inch seam allowance. And then we're going to fold over that bottom edge again another 3 8 inches. And then we'll sew this fold down with the 3 8 inch seam allowance or just before the edge. Add your two gathering base stitches to the top of the skirt. And then once again we're going to grab our top two threads and gather this up. Going back to our yoke piece, we're going to lay right sides together, matching the side seams, the back seam, and then your front center fold. And kind of like we did with the ruffle, you're going to pull up the gathers from your skirt to match the size of your yoke, and then you're going to adjust the gathers so they're evenly distributed in each section. Sew this together with a 5 8 inch seam allowance. Grab your underskirt lining and just like we did with the skirt just now, you're going to lay them right sides together, pinning the ends together until you have one big circle or tube. Sew these edges with a 5 8 inch seam allowance. Iron open your seams. Add your two gathering stitches to the top. And serge or zigzag stitch the bottom edge. Grab one of your seams and we're going to fold this entire circle in half. Place a pin at the seam at the one end and then another pin on the other end. Then you can gather this up. Mm -hmm. 
Grabbing our underskirt with the wrong side face up. Lay your lining with the right side face up. So you should have wrong sides together. Match up the pin from the seam on your lining with the back seam of the underskirt. And then the other pin is gonna match up with your center front. Pull up your gathers to match the same seam of the underskirt. Pin these together and sew it with a 5 8 inch seam allowance. Then you can serge or zigzag stitch that edge so that it's nice and neat. Flip this over so your right side is face up and then we're going to grab our skirt piece with the right side face up as well. You're going to gather up your skirt to match that edge of your underskirt and pin this together. Sew these together with a 5 8 inch seam allowance starting at the bottom of the open edge of your back seam going all the way around and then back down the other side. Leaving your skirt right side face up, we're gonna grab our bodice, making sure the lining is out of the way. And with right sides together, you're gonna line up all your dots and notches and seams with the skirt. Sew these together with the 5 8 inch seam allowance. Taking the bottom edge of your lining, fold it over 5 8 inches and iron it down all the way across. Go ahead and grab your zipper and open it up with your iron on a low setting and no steam. You're going to roll open the coils and iron it open. We're going to add in our zipper, so with your dress inside out, start at the bottom and lay your zipper the way it's supposed to go. So I open up that raw edge of the dress, lay the zipper on top, matching the raw edges, and then put a pin in place with right sides faced together. I know that's a little confusing, but hopefully you can kind of see in the video what exactly I'm doing. And you're going to add a pin to keep it in place. Do the same to the other side. This way, when we go to line it up with the edge now, we know which direction each side of the zipper will go. I also try to match the little notch at the top of the zipper with the top edge of my dress. You want to make sure both sides of the zipper are pinned at exactly the same place. So go ahead and pin down the rest of the zipper with the coils of the zipper, 5 8 inches inward. Then you can sew on your zipper. This is easier to do with a zipper foot and you're going to line up the edge of that foot right up against the coils. Take your time and you're going to sew as far down as you can. Switch your foot over and then you can do the other side. Close up your zipper just a bit, lining your dress up with the zipper on the bottom. And then you can go back and sew the bottom down as well, sewing it only to the seam allowance. I'm going to 
take a seam ripper and I'm just gonna open up those top stitches on the top edge of my skirt just up until the collar. This way I can tuck in the top edge of that zipper in between the lining and the bodice nice and neat. Once it's tucked in, you can sew that closed. Do the same thing to the other side. We're gonna close up our lining by turning your bodice inside out. This may be a little tricky since our sleeves are sewed on, but you're basically just trying to connect the two back openings to create one seam. Go ahead and pin this in place on both sides. And then we're going to go and do the same thing sewing the lining to our zipper. This may be a little tricky since you can't see the zipper, but you should be able to fill the coils against the foot through the fabric. Make sure the bottom seam of your lining is folded up when you sew it down. Go ahead and clip off your corners and then we're going to turn this inside out. We're going to pin the lining to the dress, so make sure the bottom seam allowance on your lining is folded in and you're going to match all of your seams with the front bodice. Before we finish up, go ahead and serge or zigzag stitch your armhole seam allowances. And then go ahead and serge or zigzag stitch the seam allowance at the bottom of your sleeve cuff. Once that's all complete, you're going to slip stitch your lining down into your dress. I just hand sewed a couple ribbons to the front of the dress and then I made some really, really tiny ones to put on my cuff sleeves to keep the openings closed because they kept flopping open without them. But I think it also adds a nice little touch. At this point, you should feel so accomplished because you finally finished this dress. It had a lot of tedious moments, but I think overall in the end, it's such a great costume. It's such a great dress. It has some really great pieces and it's super adorable. So I'm happy I finally got to put something together with this pattern. I really didn't know what I was in for until I actually started putting this dress together and it did take a lot longer than I thought it would to assemble but I think a lot of the techniques are pretty straightforward. I think this back detail is just too cute and different and it was really easy to achieve it. I will also leave link down below a video how to do a slip stitch and I will also leave a video down below on how to make a ruffle or do gathering. I really hope you guys enjoyed this one with me and if you are not subscribed already please subscribe and hopefully I see you guys in my next tutorial. Thank you so much for watching. Bye!